In this how-to video, we're going to talk some about Remotely Possible's ability to configure multiple applications that you can control. When you start Remotely Possible, you'll see a list of applications that are built in that Remotely Possible understands how to control. Now you'll notice that this first icon is labeled default, and this is not actually settings for an application. It's settings that will be used if none of the other applications are currently running in the foreground. So for instance, if Media Center is running in the foreground, the settings for Media Center will be applied. If Hulu is running in the foreground, the settings for Hulu will be applied. But if some other application is running, other than those two, uh, and it's not actually uh, other than any other application in this list, the default settings will be applied. Now, let's take a look at what specifically you can control for each application. So for any, every given application, uh, there's a set of mappings. So if we go over to the iPhone mappings and we can take a look at what's configured. All of these uh, things that are listed in the scrolling list here are gestures and button controls that are available to you and remotely possible on the I iPhone or iPod Touch. So flick left, right, up, and down are basically a quick movement of your finger across the screen. Um, whereas a slide is, is more of a deliberate put your finger down and move it in one direction or another. Tap and double tap are pretty self-explanatory, either a single or double tap on the screen. Two finger tap is where you uh, would perform a tap with two fingers at once, or th the three finger tap is three fingers at once. Now all of the um, commands here that start with the word press map to various buttons on the device. So for instance, let's take a look at what's on the button screen. So. Um, for example, press stop is the stop button here. Next track is the next track button here. Previous track is the previous track. So you can see a lot of these buttons um, are represented in the in this section of press here. And then at the end here we have custom buttons one through five. So if one of these buttons here that we've already defined, such as play, stop, and so forth, don't meet your needs, you can actually add additional custom buttons um, and you can map those to whatever you want to map them to. Now, as we go through this list here, as we scroll through the list, you'll see that the, that the values over here on this side of the screen change. That's because every single gesture on the left, or button press, maps to a different action that be, to be performed on the PC. So you can see the gestures on the left and the PC actions to be performed are on the right. So for example, in this, uh, for this profile for PowerPoint, when a tap is performed, the return key is pressed on uh, the PC. Let's say you wanted to change that so that instead of the return key was pressed, let's say that you wanted uh, the R key to be pressed. So to do that you would choose choose a key and then press R. And now you can see that it's set up to, to actually um, send an R key instead of the return key. It will change it back to return. You also can modify uh, these settings with uh, the control key, shift key, alt key, or windows key. Any combination of these can be used as well. Um, for more uh, advanced purposes, you can actually have the app, uh, you can put in a command line here to be executed when the uh, gesture occurs, or even send window message values. Other part of the screen that's worth talking about is the flick, hold, and launch settings. Um, the flick settings are these two numbers here. Uh, the initial flicks per second tells, the, tells remotely possible how rapidly to perform the, the, the flick operation when a flick occurs. And the flick duration uh, is how for how many seconds to allow the flick to continue. So for instance, if we were to put 10 here and 2 here, that would mean for 2 seconds we would perf rapidly perform the flick uh, gesture it would be repeated. It would start off at the rate of 10 flicks per second, but it would decrease uh, rapidly until 2 seconds had expired. The slide hold repeat is a setting that allows you to control how often um, a gesture action is repeated when a hold occurs. A hold is when you uh, touch the screen and continue to hold down, hold down on the screen. Um, so for instance, if you wanted to repeat something um, two times a second, we'd put two here. So that's what happens when a hold occurs. And the maximize on launch option is basically a parameter that's passed to the application at startup to tell it that when you start, I want you to start minimize, start maximized. 
this setting is only applicable if the application chooses to honor that flag that's passed to it, and not all applications do, but many do. So that's the settings for a built-in application like PowerPoint, which you can modify all you want. If you want to add an, a different application that can be controlled, you can do that as well. So let's say that we want to control um, calculator. So I'm going to start up calculator here. Um, so to add an application, we go File, New, and then we have this option here to choose a program. This basically gives you a list of everything that's running right now. Calc's in the list, we pick it, and remotely possible automatically figures out the path to the file and the name of the, of the, ex, of the, name of the program and so forth. And now we can come in here and begin defining any settings that we want to define for calculator. Um, so, as an example, let's say we wanted the number one to be pressed when you press um, when you tap on the screen. So we'll say choose a key one. Okay, to that, and we'll bring calculator up here. And so now, if I go to uh, gestures mode and tap on the screen up here so you can see you should see the number one appears in calculator every time I tap. Now that's a, a contrived example of course but uh, there's plenty of practical uses for mapping various uh, keys to whatever you want the application to do when you uh, perform gestures in the application. Uh, once you've configured your app the way you want it you can save it to a file so you select the one you want to save and do file export, decide where you want to save it to. I'm going to save it to the desktop here. And there's our um, file. It's been exported. You can actually send this to someone else that has remotely possible, or you can just use it for your own backup purposes. Or maybe if you have more than one computer running remotely possible, you can move these settings to another computer. So for instance, if I was on a different computer and I didn't have Windows Calculator already defined for remotely possible, I could take, I could um, double click here and it imports it into remotely possible for me. Also could have cho chose file import to perform the same operation. 